pectoral and scapular regions. Muscles of the pectoral and scapular regions are attached to the pectoral girdle formed by the clavicle and the scapula. We are going to study the pectoral region with this specimen. Skin has been removed in certain areas to show you the underlying structures. Here you can see remaining skin. Subcutaneous tissue underneath the skin and the pectoral fascia. Underneath the pectoral fascia you can identify the muscle fibers of the pectoralis major muscle. You can see the rest of the pectoralis major muscle here. It is inserted into the lateral lip of the bicipital groove of the humerus here. Here you can see the deltoid muscle, the anterior fibers of the deltoid muscle. Between the deltoid muscle and the pectoralis major muscle, there is a groove here which is called deltopectoral groove. In that groove, cephalic vein lies. Coming back to the pectoralis major muscle, it is attached to the lateral sternal border here and the adjacent costal cartilages. And it takes origin from the medial two-thirds of the anterior surface of the clavicle here. And the insertion is to the proximal end of the humerus as I mentioned before. In this specimen, you can see the left pectoralis major muscle. The pectoralis major muscle takes origin from the lateral sternal border and the costal cartilages of adjacent ribs and also from the anterior surface medial two-thirds of the clavicle. Medial two-thirds of the anterior surface of the clavicle. And the pectoralis major muscle is inserted into the lateral lip of the bicipital groove on the proximal end of the humerus. If I reflect the pectoralis major muscle laterally, underneath the pectoralis major muscle, you can identify the pectoralis minor muscle, taking origin from the third, fourth and fifth ribs and getting inserted into the coracoid process of the scapula. Above the pectoralis minor muscle, you can see another very slender muscle which is called subclavius, attached to the inferior surface of the clavicle here and the first costal cartilage here. Between the subclavius muscle and the upper border of the pectoralis minor muscle, there is a fascia here which we have removed in this specimen. That fascia is called clavipectoral fascia. Nerves and blood vessels that supply the muscles of the pectoral region pierce this fascia and come out. This is an image of the right upper limb and the right pectoral region. Identify the skin subcutaneous fat under the skin and pectoral fascia between the skin and the pectoralis major muscle. Breast tissue lies within the subcutaneous tissue layer above the pectoral fascia. This image shows the left pectoral region. When the pectoralis major muscle is reflected, you can clearly see the pectoralis minor muscle underneath the major muscle. Pectoralis minor takes origin from the third, fourth and fifth ribs and inserted into the coracoid process of the scapula. 
in this image you can identify the clavicle and the subclavius muscle. This is an enlarged view of the same specimen. You can clearly see the clavicle and the subclavius muscle in this view. Identify the neurovascular bundle emerging from the clavipectoral fascia between the subclavius muscle and the pectoralis minor muscle which has been removed in this specimen. This is an image of the back and the scapular region as seen from the posterior side. On the left side, a superficial dissection is shown. On the right side, a deep dissection is shown. On the left side, you can identify the large triangular shaped trapezius muscle, which is inserted onto the spine of the scapula, acromion and the back of the clavicle. On the right side, the levator scapulae and rhomboids are seen attached to the vertebral border of the scapula. Supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, teres major and serratus anterior are also visible in this image. This is an anterior view of the scapular region. Subscapularis muscle arises from the subscapular fossa of the scapula and inserted to the lesser tubercle. Teres major muscle is inserted to the medial lip of the bicipital groove. Pectoralis major is inserted to the lateral lip of the bicipital groove. And the latissimus dorsi is inserted to the bicipital groove or the intertubercular groove itself. This is a specimen to learn the scapular region. In this specimen, get yourself oriented. Head, neck and the back of the trunk with the two scapular regions. This is the left scapula. You can identify the trapezius muscle. If I reflect it, you can see the levator scapulae, rhomboid minor and rhomboid major muscles. Here you can see the ribs with intercostal muscles. Serratus anterior is attached to the vertebral border of the scapula here. If I put my hand in, it will be between the ribs and the intercostal muscles deep and the serratus anterior superficial to my fingers. This is the spine of the scapula. Superior to the spine, in the supraspinous fossa, lies the supraspinatus muscle. Inferior to the spine, in the infraspinous fossa, lies the infraspinatus muscle. They are attached to the proximal end of the humerus. To the lateral border of the scapula attach the teres major and minor muscles. If you look here at the inferior angle of the scapula, you can see the attachment of the latissimus dorsi muscle. In this left scapula, learn where the muscles are attached. This is the vertebral border of the scapula and this is the lateral border with the inferior angle and the superior angle. 
here you can see the glenoid fossa. This is the spinous process. Above the spinous process, you get the supraspinous fossa, where the supraspinatus muscle is attached. And below the spinous process, it is infraspinate, infraspinous fossa, where the infraspinatus muscle is attached. At the vertebral border, serratus anterior is attached. At the other end, it is attached to the upper eight ribs. This, this area on the anterior side is called subscapular fossa, from which the subscapularis muscle takes origin. Teres minor muscle is attached to the lateral border here, and the teres major is attached to the lateral border below the teres minor muscle. And the latissimus dorsi can be attached to the inferior angle. Coming back to the vertebral border or the medial border, levator scapula is attached here, rhomboid minor and the rhomboid major. Trapezius is attached to the spine of the scapula and the lateral side of the posterior surface of the clavicle here. And the, de uh, the deltoid muscle is attached to the lateral part of the anterior surface of the clavicle, acromion, and the spine here. Pectoralis minor muscle, which takes origin from the third, fourth, and fifth ribs, is attached to the coracoid process of the scapula.